This could absolutely end it. And There's let's absolutely see. no way that this goes through. Dang, let's see what happens. And no it way. is no way. That's impossible. There's no way there's those GG. Do what? Oh my no goodness. Way. <laughs> oh my goodness. And that's how you do it, folks. What is up, GOAT world? It is me, your boy JDZ, and I'm back at you again with another GOAT Format video. Our premiere event, the GOAT Format Championship number 20 has concluded, and we have a new champion in the building. And I'm telling you, this never happens. Hard work and dedication paying off. In the building with me today, I have none other than what could potentially be the greatest player to ever pick up a set of GOAT Format cards. The greatest player to ever pick up a GOAT Format deck. None other than GFC champion, Daniel Fitzgerald, AKA Lucas, BKA Lucas the Heretic in the building yes. today. How are you feeling today, champ? Finally. Feeling good, man. Feeling so good to get this win. Like it's such a great tournament and such a good one to, to get this win finally at. Like I'm just, I'm still <laughs> just soaking it in. <laughs> um, and again, there, there, there are some fantastic players we have in Go Format. There are so many to name. There's so many great players and there's so many duels who've been doing this thing for an incredible amount of time. But talking about you and your consistency, if you pull up the MMF document, you can see that you have all these accolades, but no major title. And everyone, all the time, Lucas, hey, he's good, but he's got no major title. He's good, but he's got no major title. Da, 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 no major title. And I'm like, dude, come on, when is this going to end? And now it has ended, man. So tell us about finally. that experience. Tell us about that experience and how that's felt to you. And now how does it feel to finally put that crown on your head? It's been great, man. Like, I've come so close so many times. So, like, it, it, anyone who's played these things knows that there's so so many moments in a tournament that if just one thing went differently you wouldn't be where you're at and so everything just has to work out perfectly and i've been close before i got second in an flc and then threw it at the end and you know to finally actually get there i mean it's just it's a really special experience because it is even if you're really on it, it is so hard to get one of these things. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, it just has to be your day. You have to have the right deck at the right time, at the right place, at the right space. Speaking of the right deck, so for this event, we understand that you can play a lot of different strategies at a high level, but for this field, you decided to go back to the patent pending warrior strategy. Okay, and we're gonna pull that deck up right here. Here is the deck that your GFC champion took to this event. This is back-to-back -back warrior wins. We had LeBounty win with Warriors, and then now Luke has a hair to his comeback awards i don't know does, does, does that mean warriors is the best deck luke lucas what, what do you say about that yeah it kind of does mean that i mean turbo's the the tier zero deck and then warriors is the deck that beats that deck mm. so i mean i don't know what you can say about it and it holds it down against everything else pretty well as well i mean this event man i mean everyone was playing turbo uh and they were playing teched out turbo right with with main deck mind controls main deck dust shoots it was it was one of those events where it was like it felt like when I first got into Warriors. When I first started playing Warriors, and Turbo was everywhere, and it felt so free. It was just like, <laughs> wow, I'm winning all the. I was just winning Patreon after Patreon. I was just, I was going crazy on the ladder. It just felt like nobody was even thinking about Warriors, and it's, it's almost like we're right back there again. Right, the meta. You say the meta rotated back to a complete, uh, a complete Turbo. Turbo circle jerk of against yes. it. A complete turbo circle. <laughs> so circle, right, though. circle turbo circle <laughs> jerk. And now you have found your way back with the Warriors. Okay. But tell us about this deck. I see you have some special inclusion, some things that you did different that a lot of Warrior players are not doing. Uh, why did you make those choices for this event uh, in particular? Or how, how much detail you want to go into that if you can? Yeah. So I felt like, uh, I mean, we were going to go hard on Turbo this event. The double level two made a lot of sense. It allowed me to play the double Book of Moons as well, which was great against so many of these other matchups that you wouldn't expect to be good against, um, which I'll talk about in a sec. Uh, the triple dust shoot main, you know, a lot of people go in with two. This event felt like the one to go in with three. I mean, I tend to go in with three anyway and just kind of hope I get it. But the Book of Moons also, right? So the Book of Moons main deck, the other deck that was coming out a little bit, there were some big players playing Warriors. Well, mm -hmm. I've got basically five battle traps in here. I got the triple Saku and the double Book of Moon. Uh, most of the other guys are playing like two Sakus. It had a lot of juice against Turbo. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it had the other things like, okay, so it's got Dust Shoot and that's gonna brick against Warriors. Well, I bet you don't have five battle traps, right? Right, right. I, dude, this is so, it's so clean and it's so elegant, but I'm looking at this main deck and there is a card that I think is missing. And a lot of people who've been following the Lucas bandwagon for a minute they know they notice that there's a, a, a lack of zing in this deck what's going on with the no zing why, why are you playing no zing you win the title no zing what's up with that 
Yeah, it didn't make the final cut. Oh. Uh, and Dust Tornado also didn't make the final cut, which is maybe even more surprising to, yeah. to most people. Um, I mean, the way I was looking at it, Game 1, Dust Tornado is just not that strong right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to be... I have a, a plenty of things to poke with. I got the double level 2. Dust Tornado doesn't do a ton Game 1. It's going to maybe clear out some kind of a back row that could be Jar Greed, could be Phoenix Wingland Blast. It's quite a bit better Game 2, I think. But Game 2, I was pretty much smacking everybody with Mobius. Like, mm -hmm. I was bringing it against Turbo. I was bringing it against everybody. Uh, so I didn't I didn't really need the Dust Tornadoes. This, I mean, if you look at the deck, it's it's very cohesive. I mean, the one card that maybe I could have cut would have been a walk for the Dust Tornado. But I really did enjoy the one walk. Um, so I just I didn't really feel like there was room for it. And I didn't really feel like it, it, it jived with the strategy. Um, I didn't need to resolve a Dust Tornado. I'd much rather slow the game down game two get the reapers in play get the spies in play and then eventually hit him with a mobius or hit him with the tribe or hit him with something where i can start poking i wasn't really trying to uh to play that little incremental game i just want to blow him out okay and it worked out it worked out i don't i was wondering how you were going to get through this thing looking at your deck there was a tremendous amount of burn that appeared in this event as well much higher than originally anticipated and you did have that one walk i was looking i was like man it's gonna be really hard to be burned but now looking at it again i, I don't i don't think so because you do have the mobius you did have that one walk you had the king tigers in there uh what were some of your matchups that you can that you can remember if you can think back uh throughout this tournament i know it kind of happened i know it happened recently but if you can remember some of your matchups yeah i'll tell you i did play burn actually i only played one luckily but uh game two um so yeah i don't have the dust I, i've just got a single walk but uh the spirit reapers are surprisingly good against that deck now yeah they're gonna get run over by pandas mm -hmm. which is you know a little bit scary but it's a level three so i was poking the guy with spirit reaper knocking cards out of his hand you have it's just two extra level threes that, oh, and okay. I, I mean that's so i mean may you know maybe i got lucky and connected with my spirit reapers maybe it's actually just a good card against them but uh that was that was two additional cards that i was able to bring in against burn so i was able to bring in the two spirit reapers i was able to bring in the wong who's double mobius and the walk um i don't think i ever saw the walk but i didn't want to play two of them because uh, you don't. I, I would not want to draw two as a warrior player. Yeah. It, it's pretty bricky. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh man. Me bringing in spirit. If I try to bring in spirit reverse burn, I'm gonna get hit with the biggest, most thick, robust Gakugere panda you've ever seen for 19. I just had turn. to believe, man. I just had to believe it wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> and it didn't. It didn't. I love the sack it's in at least though. All right, but you already kind of you already kind of alluded to the side deck. Let's talk more about this side deck. I think it is a very Lucas looking side deck. You got your spies in there. You have the Mobius in there. You do have the Magician of Faith in there. Two mind cons, brain control. How did the side deck perform for you? Were there any changes? Again, aside from the walk, what other changes would you make, and uh, how did it perform for you? The side deck performs so so good. Uh, I mean, it's really just kind of a culmination of things. I mean, SDL Killa started this whole uh, Gravekeeper spy deal. We were all playing two of those. Mm -hmm. So now there's a third one in here, and there's a mag, and there's two Reapers. Like, we're just going face down like crazy. <laughs> and, I mean, honestly, if you see what the bounty has been doing for the past couple months, he's been rocking that Reaper and the, and the Magician of Faith for a while. So this is... You know, maybe I went a little bit harder than than any of us have gone. You know, I put with three spies instead of two, with the two reapers instead of one. But I think it's kind of just a culmination of where things have been going with warriors. Uh, that game two, I mean, you're bringing if you bring in three spies, two reapers, a mag, a couple Mobiuses, like the whole game plan changes. And what's interesting also is uh, it became open deck lists in the top 32. Right. And so my opponents are all looking at this. And, um, you know, I've got people leaving a knock against me because they're yeah. thinking, they're looking at that list and like, oh, jeez, he's going to bring in the world against me. So then it's then it's like, well, now there's a, a, that extra mind game. Am mm -hmm. I going to bring all that stuff in? You know, maybe I leave the bag out. Maybe I don't bring in the Reapers, you know. Uh, so it was a very interesting event to be able to have this side deck and have it open. Um, it, I think it added a little something to it, which was pretty fun. Man, that is so awesome. The mental, we gotta, you got to invade, invading the opponent's mind space. Write that down. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what it yes. takes to be into the champ. you gotta, you got to play the cards, but you also have to play the opponent and invade their mind. Okay. Okay. So now while I have you here, and we kind of talked about this before we started recording, a lot of duelists, 
uh, have been reaching out to me and reaching out to the channel and to Discord. And they, they say, hey, JD, when you get these top players come by, you got to get them to talk about their side decking and their side decking strategy. Okay, that's the most recommended thing to say. And they said, JD, don't let them go. Don't let them off the hook. So, Lucas, I know you're an active player. You are a champion. Tell, can what, what information can you give to the GOAT world while I have you here to talk about side decking in GOAT format, side decking with this deck? Uh, what what examples can you give? Anything that you're willing to share uh, to the goat world in terms of side decking and uh, and and preparation for that? Yeah, um, Dust Shoot crushes Turbo, so I leave it in going first, obviously. But I can side it out going second. Uh, it, so it, and leaving a single copy is probably still good. But that, so there's a couple cards you can take out. Kaiku comes out against a lot of people. People don't realize that. Um, you should think about Kaiku when you're thinking about side decking. Don's Luke comes out against a lot of people. Um, battle traps, of course. Uh, I'm probably not siding out the Solemns, though. Um, as far as traps go, though, most of the other traps can go in certain situations. Uh, even Torrential Tribute can go, uh, which I don't think a lot of people realize. Uh, Torrential Tribute can go against a lot of different decks because you're trying to establish something as a warrior deck. You want to establish tempo. You don't want to Torrential your whole field. If you're going first, you know, you set up a monster, you set a Torrential, that card's just going to sit there the rest of the game. Mm. Uh, so that's a card people don't think to side out. Um, the, as far as the monsters go, you, you, I have 14 in the main deck. It doesn't need to be that way after the side deck. I mean, you're not siding in, uh, you know, your whole side deck of monsters and ended up with still 14 in the deck. Uh, so it is fine to go up to 18 monsters, 19 monsters after siding uh, if you're going with a flip strategy. Yeah, I don't know. What, what else could I say about this? <laughs> no, that's I good. I, th I, think, I, th I, th I think that's that's a lot of information that you have to decipher. I love how the champ... Blah, blah, blah. I, 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 love, I love how the champ was able to teach you how to fish there and not fish for you. You know, so not giving up the exact information. I love that. I love that from the GFC champ. But I love this deck. Make sure you guys get into the comment section. Get into the like section. Like this video. Tell us what you think about this deck. Tell us what you think about Danny Fitzgerald and his champion, and his champion business. But while we got you here, is there any let's talk about some highlights man i was in the stream and we were watching this thing live and you were absolutely cooking in some of those events one one that jumps out of my mind is you versus little bounty coming on in both of you guys have bounties on your head i'm not sure if you heard about the bounty program but we had yeah. a bounty on you we had a bounty on the bounty and you guys were playing against each other and i'm like oh my goodness it was a tight match and you hit that heavy storm and it's just a whole you guys go into the shadow realm for a minute talk to us about that match that play up against a legendary champion as well gfc champion he's trying to go back to back you're trying to get yours just talk about that moment how did it feel and uh what was going through your head through that uh throughout that play playing against the bounty is always one of my favorite matchups if i can get him in a tournament because we both play warriors we both play very similarly uh mm -hmm. we're kind of on the same wavelength a lot of the time with these decks um and so the mind games can be kind of fun the <laughs> for this event though in particular my list um uh, was much better suited for the warrior matchup, I thought. Uh, he might disagree, I don't know. Uh, but so I was I was definitely fine to play him in this event. Uh, he's a great warrior player. If you look at my list, if you look at my side deck, you're gonna notice uh, several of his uh, strategies popping up in there. Uh, so it's always great to play that guy. Uh, the, honestly, if you watch that replay, it went my way so hard. Like that mm -hmm. heavy storm, man. It was uh, it was just one of those things where it just kind of materialized, and I looked at it, and I saw this heavy storm. I'm like, oh, crap, this is going to be like a plus two heavy storm. I guess I'll just fire it off. <laughs> and, and in the heat of the moment, it looked like some kind of an interesting play. Really, it was just like a blowout, like, yeah. here you go. Enjoy your plus two heavy. <laughs> But I mean, he had the song. He could have negated it, but it would have just been a whole. It would have been a whole thing. It was. It was one of those things that I thought. I thought was really interesting and cool. In particular, I mean, I would love to say that I like. I really love the Spirit Reaper today. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the Spirit Reaper got in, poked my burn opponent, knocked out his graceful charity. Nice. You know, who knows what would have happened if that hadn't <laughs> happened. Uh, Spirit Reaper got in against the Stein deck. You know, I was able to set it, and he goes Stein into King Dragon, runs right into my Spirit Reaper. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, Spirit Reaper, I was being able to like mine con and poke with it all day. So that card just went absolutely so hard today. MVP? Well, not today, but M the oh. <laughs> Very, Spirit MVP? Reaper and level two, man. Spirit Reaper and level two were just beautiful cards. Awesome. Maybe I'll put, we'll put those guys on the thumbnail. They'll get some, they'll get some thumbnail. I won't get Spirit Reaper on the thumbnail too. Well. We might have to get the, get the Spirit Reaper up there. <laughs> I love what you got going on, man. And again, I'm, I'm so proud that you are the champion, man, because you worked hard and that just shows everyone. If you come out and you grind and you grind and you grind and you grind, eventually you'll get to what you want and you'll reach your destination. What's next for you though? What's the next step? Well, I've been, uh, I mean, I got all my invites locked up for the, for the season. I got this GFC win. 
Uh, so I've done kind of what I need to do this season. I might actually do a little bit of head judging or a little bit of side judging or whatever like that. I've been, uh, I did head judge a, uh, Patreon a while back. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I might try to get out there and do a little bit more judging, give back to the community in that way. Um, and plus it's fun, you know, hang out with your, hang out with the, your friends and, you know, judge a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. It's a great time. Right on. You can all, Hey, there's always room in the booth for, for a champ, you know what I'm saying? So if you want to come in and do some commentary, Maybe just you, 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 you can talk, you, you can, you can more, your, your brother soul master was in the booth this weekend as well, uh, hooking that up. So if you want to come by and do some commentary, you're more than welcome to do that. And head judging is always needed. You know, we, we, we will appreciate that deeply. Um, but before before we wrap this thing up, champ, is there any uh, special shout outs you want to give? Anybody you want to thank for for helping you get to this uh, momentous mountaintop? Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously, Soulmaster Matt, my brother, you know, we we made this deck together uh, the night before the tournament. We were out there grinding, figuring out what we should do for our tech choices. Uh, got a shout out LRG. Uh, they, they're still doing it. We're still doing it over there. Been doing it since 2018, 2019, somewhere in that area. Uh, we got Safari Zone out there. We're still we're still holding it down. You know, we're we're down, but we're not out. We're gonna we're gonna keep plugging along, and I, th I think we're uh, we're gonna be in a good shape in a few weeks. Uh, got a shout out to my teammates over there. So like uh, Rabbit in particular, playing the Warrior strategy as well, and doing great at the. Uh, at the uh, at the tournament mm -hmm. and he's been he's been killing it with warriors i got, I got a shout out uh La Bounty and moxies okay uh, for both uh you know La Bounty for for the tech choices and moxies for being able to bounce some ideas off him absolutely shout out to all those duels man and shout out to you specifically lucas man for your hard work and effort and continue to uh, and continue resilience to make it to the mountaintop best player right here see you until next time but that's <laughs> all i got anything else you want to say before we wrap this bad boy up and shut it on down that's about it. Thanks so much, JBZ. Thanks for uh, keeping it going out there, man. Love of what you course. do. Of course. I love what you got going on, too. All right. And that is Lucas. All right. That was Danny Fitzgerald, a.k.a. Lucas, a.k.a. Lucas the Heretic, coming on in your newest GSE champion. Tell us what you think about what he had to say. I think he was spitting. Uh, so make sure you get into the conversation, like, and subscribe, and also join the GoFormat.com Discord. There will be more events taking place shortly. As always, I'm JDZ. I play Ghost to the next time. Shout out to all the real ones. Salute to all the OGs. Peace.